I've reported frequently on Raspberry Pis with SPDIF boards as digital players. Getting them to work is a piece of cake for the tech enthusiast, getting them to sound properly in a decent stereo is already somewhat more difficult, even though they are used with separate DACs. But for the non-technical music lover, this all might be a bridge too far. So Bryston built a bridge called the BDP Pi. As the name suggests, the BDP Pi is based on the Raspberry Pi and Bryston makes no secret of it. They also used the knowledge of Hi-Fi Berry and used the technology of the Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus for the SPDIF and optical outputs. The nicely designed cabinet has an anodized aluminium or black anodized aluminium faceplate and a dark grey top and sides. There is a 44mm TFT screen, an infrared sensor and some buttons to browse the menu. The right one doubles as a pause button. There's far more to do on the rear. An HDMI connector, four USB 2 connectors, a network, infrared transmit, SPDIF and optical digital out, the 12V DC input and a power switch. The infrared transmit sends the signal received by the infrared sensor on the front to other Bryston equipment. It only takes four screws to open the BDP Pi. The Raspberry Pi board is mounted upside down on a large PCB that carries the name of both Hi-Fi Berry and Bryston. It appears that the BDP Pi output stage is based on the Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus, but the PCB also contains a lot of power supply components including a rectifier, at least three voltage regulators and quality caps including a 6800 microfarad buffer. The supplied power rig delivers 12V DC, so the internal power supply components are there to clean up and separate the power to several components. I wasn't able to see what component have their own voltage regulators, but my guess would be that the Raspberry Pi, the display electronics and the I2S to SPDIF electronics are separated this way. Some other things I noticed, a transformer provides galvanic separation of the SPDIF output that, by the way, comes in the shape of a very sturdy gold plated RCA chassis part. The power supply is fused and the HDMI output, which is on the side of the Raspberry Pi, has been moved to the rear of the BDP Pi by means of a cable. As is normal for the Raspberry Pi, the system software is on a micro SD card in the shape of Bryson's own player software. That is to say, it uses a lot of open source components to compose its own experience. Again, that's only smart. Compare it to a buffet where you pick the food you like to compose your own dream dinner. If you choose wisely, that is. A curry and a sushi on the same plate won't work. So let's see what software dinner Bryson has chosen. The software is called Manic Moose and it's the third iteration of the firmware for Bryson digital players. It is based on Debian, one of the popular Linux distributions. The music player software of Linux is called Music Player Demon, which is used by all Raspberry Pi music software I know, including Manic Moose. The advantage is that it can be used with all remote apps that do MPD like MPAD, MPD Lux, MPD Remote and others. But you can also use the HTML interface by opening an internet browser like Windows Explorer, Chrome, Opera, Safari and so on and type the IP address that is displayed on the screen of the BDP Pi. Here you do the settings like what network shares hold your music what DAC to use and so on. Here you also choose whether you want the BDP Pi to work as an MPD player, Rune Endpoint, Airplay Station, DLA Server, Renderer or Client or Squeezebox. It is easy set. If you want music to play continuously, for instance if you own a pub, it has provisions to start playing immediately after startup and restarts MPD if something went wrong. It also has proper internet radio provisions and a beta version of a title player. I'm not going through all the possibilities here since you can easily download the Manic Moose manual from the Bryson site. 
One remark though. Having MPD index your music takes a lot of time, more than comparable players on the Raspberry Pi take. As far as I can see, Manic Moose doesn't index more than other players. I mention this only for those that buy a BDP Pi and wonder if it needs to take that much time. Yes it does, but it's only once, so it's not a real problem. The Manic Moose firmware offers many options, as we have seen before, and it is controlled using a browser. Simply check the IP address on the display of the BDP Pi, go to a browser and type HTTP colon slash slash followed by that IP address. A screen will pop up that on top shows the primary control functions and info of the MPD player. Along the bottom are buttons for a lot of settings. They are grouped logically and the default settings will use the MPD player. Just connect a drive that contains music to one of the USB ports and a DAC over either USB, SPDIF, optical or HDMI. I will check if an update is available the first time by clicking the update firmware. If you want to use another player than MPD, click on the services button and select the player that you want to use. Given the many options that can be set, including for instance DOP, DSD over PCM, it can be a bit intimidating, but browsing through the options and having the option to restore the factory settings in the systems menu makes you find what you are looking for. Don't forget that right out of the box it works fine in the default MPD player. I control the BDP Pi primarily for my iPad and then an app like MPad is a better option since it does a lot of work in the iPad. But you can use both, even simultaneously. I used Manic Moose for adjusting settings and other maintenance while using MPad for playing music. Now it gets complex, for there are several ways to connect a BDP Pi to a DA converter. I didn't listen to HDMI, that is limited to 48 kHz anyway, but I did compare the USB and SPDIF outputs and preferred the SPDIF in combination with the MyTech Brooklyn. Then I wanted to know if it really sounds better than a Raspberry Pi 3 with a Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus transformer board and to take the software out of the equation I also used the Manic Moose software on the Raspberry Pi. When used with a normal 8 euro switching mode power supply the difference was very audible on my sets 1 and 2. On my set 3 the difference was also audible but the result was acceptable. See the show notes for the link to my reference sets. Then I used the S-Booster power supply connected directly to the Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus as described in my video Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus Part 2. See the link. What resulted is a sound close to the Bryson BDP Pi, but not equal. The latter offering more detail, but slightly less sibilance control. The Bryson being my favorite. Compared to the SOTM SMS200 that only has USB out, fell in favor of the SMS200 rather than the BDB Pi over USB. But again, there is no SPDIF on the SMS200, so if your DAC has no or a poor USB input, the BDP Pi would be the choice. I just went to a concert of Pink Project, a Dutch band that plays Pink Floyd material fantastically without being full clones and yet keeping close to the original. This has nothing to do with this review, but I wanted to mention that a glass of beer here costed a fair 3 euros. I have seen higher prices during concerts and the public didn't care given the large numbers of trays that were consumed. But 3 euros per glass means a price per litre of 12 euros as where the same brand of beer cost 1.39 a litre in the supermarket. So material cost is not the only factor that defines a retail price. The Bryston has a price tag of 1490 euros and I have explained that it differs from the components for the hobbyist. But the price difference remains considerable. Whether you want to spend that amount of money is your personal choice. If you have more money than time, this might be a nice option. 
If you want to integration with other Bryson pro uh, components, that might be a reason. The tiny display seems trivial, but for non-technical people it displays the IP address, making it a lot easier to open the browser interface. And then the software is, although still not super intuitive, more accessible than the public domain version. And you might expect more support from a dealer, distributor and or Bryston. If the sound quality would be the only criterion, this might not be your thing. But if your profile includes items like little time, even less patience with equipment, able to spend some money and sensitive for well designed devices, this might be a good choice. But if you are a hobbyist that has more time than money and is willing to plough through all kinds of user groups, this might not be your product. I personally find it commendable that Bryson chooses Hi-Fi Berry as hardware partner and open source software to base their firmware on. They could then add knowledge they have of high quality audio equipment. I hope to see more of this and when I do I will let you know. So stay in contact by subscribing to this channel or my newsletter or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. See the show notes for the links. If you have a question post it below this video but please don't ask me for buying advice. See my about questions video to find out why. If you like this video please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see super exclusive videos too. Just one dollar a month will do. The link is in the show notes. And don't forget to tell your friends on the web about this channel. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the hbproject.com. Whatever you do, enjoy the music. <laughs>